question number six uh, deals with beige. And we're going to deal a little bit with uh, complementation tests as well as getting recombination events between mutations. So to start out with, uh, we talk about doing co-infections into strain K of E. coli. So recall that strain K in E. coli is the strain that the R2 mutants cannot grow in. So R2 mutants, you might remember, so uh, wild type R2, are able to grow in strain B of E. coli and strain K of E. coli. But R2 mutants can still grow in strain B, but they cannot grow in strain K. So in this problem, we're putting these things into strain K. So R2 mutants will be able to grow, but R2 mutants will not be able to grow. And so what we're doing here is we're putting in two different phage mutants at the same time. And this is just a complementation test. So if uh, mutations, say, in gene B and gene C, or sorry, I shouldn't say gene, if mutations in B and C, these two different mutants, are in the same gene, you will not get lysis, so that's the mutant phenotype. But if they complement each other, like A and B here, you do get lysis, meaning that these mutations must be in different genes. So whenever you're doing these types of problems, I think the easiest thing to do, regardless of whether they're phage or any other phenotype, is to focus on the ones that give you the mutant phenotype. Uh, in this case, no lysis, because these are the ones that are going to be mutations in the same gene. So from this data, we can see that B and C are in the same gene, because they do not give uh, complementation. They're still showing no lysis. B and D also give no lysis, so we know that D is also in this complementation group, so that they're all alleles of each other. And C and D give the mutant phenotype of no lysis, and again, we've already put them in this group, so that makes perfect sense. So we have three different alleles uh, of this gene, so we have three different mutations in one gene. And then if we look at what doesn't complement, or sorry, what does complement, so A and B do complement, they give you lysis, which is the wild type phenotype, up here. So we know that these must be mutations in a different gene. So A is not in the same complementation group as B, so it goes by itself. And we also have that A and C uh, complement, so they're not in the same complementation group. They must be mutations in different genes, which is consistent with this model also. So what we can say out of this uh, part of the problem is that A is a has a mutation in one gene, and B, C, and D have mutations in the other gene. So this is complementation testing. The second part, we're dealing with recombination. So again, if you remember from what we talked about before, if you have a situation where you have phage that have a mutation in one gene, or in one position of the chromosome, we'll say, and you co-infect with another phage that has a mutation in a different place. And to do this co-infection, you've got to do this in strain B, because both of these phage are able to grow in strain B, wild type or the mutant. So these will be able to grow there. And while they're growing, there's a chance for recombination to occur between these two chromosomes. And if it does, then what you end up with is a chromosome that has both mutations or a wild type sequence. And then once you put these phage into strain K, if they've been able to generate wild type sequences like this, then they'll be able to grow in strain K and they will give you plaques. Which again is your wild type phenotype. However, if these two mutations are in the same place, and it could be that one's, say, a point mutation and one's a deletion, but if they both affect the same sequence, so that neither one of these chromosomes contain the wild-type sequence anymore, then there's no way for these things to recombine to give you a wild-type sequence. And you're stuck with only the mutant sequences. So when you put these into strain K, then, you will get no plaques. And this is an indication, getting no plaques, that there are mutations in the same place. So they could be the same mutation, or they could just be mutations that affect the same sequence, like a point mutation and a deletion. 
So in this case, what we can see is, so this data is largely going to tell you something about whether the mutations are in the same place or in different places. If they're in different places, you'll be able to recombine and get plaques. If they're in the same place, like here, uh, they won't be able to recombine and give plaques like this. So in this case, uh, when we do these sorts of complementation, or sorry, when we do these sorts of recombination experiments with mutants A and B, we can get plaques which tells you that those mutations are different. Same with B and C, or C and D. So A and B, B and C, C and D, each of those pairs must have mutations that occur in different places. However, when you do a cross between B and D, we don't get any plaques, which indicate that these mutations are likely to be in the same place. And it could be a couple of scenarios. You know, it could be that these mutations are, say, the same base change, or it could be that there's a base change, as I mentioned before, and say a deletion on the other chromosome. So they're not exactly the same mutation, but there's just no wild type sequence left here. So what does all this mean in terms of the the answers? So this is kind of a multiple choice. So let's start out with the complementation data first. So we figured that B, C, and D were in one gene, A was in another gene. So just reading the beginning of these questions, so A carries a mutation in one gene, B, C, and D are in a different gene. Yep, that's true. A and B carry mutations in the same gene. Well, that's out. So we can eliminate that. A carries a mutation in one gene, B, C, and D are in a different gene. True. Same true. A, B, C, and D carry mutations in the same gene. Out. Okay, so we're down to three just with this data. So what about the uh, the rest of the problem then? So if we looked at what forms plaques and what doesn't, uh, we can kind of go to the second part. So C and D carry the same mutation. So C and D, when we do this experiment, we do get plaques out, which indicate that they must be in different places because we're getting wild-type sequences back out. So that's out. All right. Uh, B and C carry the same mutation. So B and C gives us plaques. They must carry different mutations. And that leaves us with D. So that B and D carry the same mutation. And that would explain why we don't get any plaques in this one. So this is our correct answer. This is consistent with all of our data. That A carries a mutation in one gene, B, C, and D are in a different gene, and then that B and D carry the same mutation.